And uh, it was one of those evenings where we've all had them where we had calls like every hour on the hour, so you really don't get no sleep. And especially if you work a swing shift, you're already tired when you show up, it just uh, makes it worse. And uh, probably I think like maybe on the third or fourth call, it's like three or four in the morning, we get a call, um, Nelson and I were the only two here, uh, he was driving, and uh, we're, we're heading uh, down uh, Main Street toward uh, Bailey Avenue, and about halfway there, Nelson goes to me, do you know where we're going? And I said to him, I thought that you knew where you were going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and eventually, we're, we're lucky we're going the right way. <laughs> but, but we had a call back out. Uh, we are hoping that someone else would call on location and give the address so we would know without being embarrassed by asking about <laughs> where the call is. So, but those are some things that I remember that sticks in my memory. You didn't, you had no texting or anything back then. You didn't want to be the one to get on the air and say, what was the address? Because the chief would say, you didn't listen to when they told the call out? Yeah. Yeah. Or you were riding with the chief. No, we're on Rosedale, not Maynard. DJ? <laughs> Most favorite kid moment? <laughs> There's a lot. I just loved coming up here with my dad, Joey. Like, I came up here every chance I could. Like, one of my first words was just making fire truck noises. And I couldn't talk as a kid the best, but I just came up here all the time. Just like when my dad went on call to sit in the truck van. I remember them building this. and Just friendships you build. Like uh, Toad and Gilly, Craig, everyone, Roger, just closer to them than most of my own real family. So, consider them uncles, friends, all that. Uh, kid moments, there's a ton, but uh, moments. I joined uh, right before the October storm, so everything was thrown at me at once. So I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's different being a kid coming up here and then going to college, like, holy crap. Um, uh, one of my favorite memories was, I always wanted to go to my first fire with my dad, but I couldn't because he was sick and can't really screw him up. So if I could go with anyone else, it would be Toad, Gilly, Craig. And I think Toad and Gilly took me in, and we were overhauling, and uh, they pranked me. Uh, we were doing the ceiling, and uh, I didn't have my mask on. All that crap just came down all hit me right in the face. And, uh, that's a good one up there. Um, it wasn't a prank. It was, it was, it was a lesson. <laughs> yeah. He took his mask off during overhaul. And yeah. Like, hey, pull this, would you? He knew it was blowing in insulation and baseball. <clears throat> that was good. Um, I'll do that again, would you? Yeah. Um, like, just being there for everyone, uh, I think I've helped almost everyone. Who's moved back in the day, moved. Uh, being there for Roger when Roger Jr. passed away, Ruth in his daughter in law's house. Uh, kickball tournaments, all that stuff. Just being there for people. Uh, just, I've always loved coming up here, and once I could join, I joined at 16. and. I haven't looked back, besides the three years I was gone, but I'm back, so. <laughs> Peter? Peter, uh, Christopher? Uh, what is Cyrus Gray? Oh, right, I got them. Yep. Mm -hmm. There are, there's, there's so many good, good memories. Uh, that, uh, outweigh the, the bad ones, unfortunately. Uh, the funniest one <laughs> would be uh, probably going to my first fire, and uh, Old Rescue 5 is on fire <laughs> after we come back from like a garage fire, and it's like, what the hell did I join? These guys, you know, <laughs> their own trucks start on fire. Uh, and then probably the worst thing is being brand new to the company and being the first one out of the scene of a uh, uh, person struck by a car and you're like, you know, what the hell do I do? That's the worst feeling that, you know, probably was within two months of joining the company and no EMS training at the time. And you're like, holy shit, you want a cop? <laughs> So that's probably the worst thing. Peter? Well, I'm going to echo what a couple of other guys have said. I'll well, echo David here. I've been in law enforcement for over 35 years. I've met a lot of people. And I've said this before to people I've talked to, and I'll say it here in front of everybody. Some of the best people I've ever met in my life have been right here in the Eggersville Host Company. 
I was so glad when I got voted into this company because back then they could blackball you. Okay? Was the station two guy? Yeah, and you better have your bottle too, by the way. <laughs> when you get <kept> voted in. <laughs> but uh, a lot of great memories here. Water ball tournaments back then. A lot of social events, family picnics, and uh, one of the most memorable calls I have would be the Wayside Nursery Fire. <laughs> And one of the things I remember most about that is the way Ira and the fire inspector and a couple other people were standing there looked at me when I walked out after a while after Marshall Bechelham got blowing out the side door, ran up to us and said, this is an arson fire. There's trailers all over the place in there. Four of them just stood there and go, none of them said a word. <laughs> I said, okay, I told you. And uh, the worst call would be obviously the uh, Allenhurst fire. Craig? Uh, best memory is uh, just really joining here 25 years ago and uh, meeting some great people. I mean, when I joined here, Pat and I joined the same day, and uh, we didn't really get along in high school that well. But uh, after we got on, we joined here, just became uh, great friends, and from then on, I met a lot of great friends here. Um, one of the funniest stories I'll have to bring up is uh, Pat and I used to like to go out drinking once in a while. <laughs> and uh, we had a certain guy that wanted to go out drinking with us, but he wasn't of age. So uh, he said, come on, guys, take me with you, take me with you. All right. No, it has, can't be that story. So we, <laughs> so we head down into the city of Buffalo, and we tell... John to uh, go into a bar and uh, if he can get served a couple drinks, we'll, uh, we'll wait a couple minutes. If he gets served, we'll meet him in there. Well, we sent him into a gay bar. <laughs> How'd you know it was a gay bar? <laughs> so, John did come out a few uh, minutes later and great. realizing that there was a lot of gay people around and uh, got some pictures though. on the wall. And got a drink. And <laughs> <laughs> a phone number. <laughs> Uniform night. So, uh, I don't know, favorite calls, I don't know, it's probably one of the first calls I had, one of the first, um, first or second call I went to. I lived on Agar Road, came up here, and or came up to uh, the old station one, and uh, I was the first one there, and I was checking my pager to see if there really was a call. There was nobody else around, I didn't know what to do, didn't know anything was going on, and finally people started showing up, and I felt, oh, okay, I am supposed to be here. <laughs> so, um, my least favorite is uh, the call up on, uh, I was uh, Layton or Lennox, or the 18-month-year-old. Yeah, that hit uh, close to home. <coughs> My daughter was the same age at the time, so that was a bad one. Eric? Um, best memory for Eggersville probably be any time we get to go out to the community, do uh, like the block parties, do the fire preventions. Know, get, get involved with showing the community what we are all about, um, as well as the remembrances for like the memorials, like 9/11, setting up all the trucks, um, just showing the pride and integrity of this place to the community. That you know, for the most part, they see the trucks running. You know, they know that we answer the emergency call, but they don't know exactly everything that we we do. Um, Favorite call was probably the first fire I got, where I was working the line. It was uh, when they were building the McDonald's over on Sweet Home and Sheridan, uh, fully involved Bobcat fire, so I to put that out nice. So, um, least favorite, um, I've been lucky enough not to get those tragic calls, um, but I think any call that um, is a repeat offender, or you start getting the mentality of complacency, of saying, oh, well, um, you know, maybe we shouldn't go talk to this call or do that, but then you start realizing, you know, 
it's an emergency no matter what, so just get going with it and uh, start you know, changing your mentality behind not, uh, you know, not getting lazy, I guess. We had a box alarm at St. Ben's, <coughs> just a routine box alarm. We get there, there's black smoke pouring out of the building. It was a basement fire, so it's very similar. Cool. Johnny? Favorite memory? I got two. Uh, first one's uh, joining the company, and the second one is watching my son get sworn in. Uh, most memorable call? Uh, being part of the crew uh, to help save the man's life on Agar Road during the fire. And least favorite? Uh, working on that 13 year old girl at the area that did not make it. Okay. Raj, most oh, favorite memory? Yeah, well, I joined in 1964. So, <laughs> yeah, at that time they didn't have the classes that they have now in regards to. Uh, you know, uh, first aid and EMS and even essentials of firemanship. So you learned everything on your Wednesday night drill and or going to calls. And I, uh, my, one of my most memorable calls was with Ira the Chief over on the Leduca fire up on uh, LeBron. So that, uh, but you always, you always learn something from these guys. That was on duty nights with Ira. It was our duty nights. That was memorable. And I guess. One of the worst ones I was on was the, uh, the we had a mutual aid with uh, North Farney over on uh, Bailey Avenue, just past the post office. Uh, there was a couple, of, there was like three cars involved, two of them were head on, and the first flight came in, they shut the whole road down and stuff. There was a couple of dead ones out of that, little children, and you know, definitely some elderly people. It was, it was a total fucking mess over there. So it was nasty. What's up? Uh, Jim. What? Uh, most favorite memory? I'm just getting into Copeland because there's pizza. Great. Then you got blackball. I only took one, right? Right. You and the, the camaraderie that's here, and the diversity that's in this company. Everybody's got a different occupation, and how you can use it at a call. The knowledge that you gain. They belong to this company. To me, it's phenomenal. And more people realize that I think we've had more membership. That's that's the big thing there. The first call. It's kind of a toss-up. The only, only fire we had was our first death in the company. That was a bad night. And to make it worse, I was up on the 28-foot wood ladder and he decided to break. That was an experience. And probably, I don't know if you wish it was only or had a first aid call on Main Street. Uh, several doors from the hall. Motorcycle, we a couple of us were standing outside. Motorcycle goes barreling down Main Street and the phones come over. Motorcycle accident, Main Street. I said, could it be? And it was. He ran dead into one of the big trees there. And luckily, like Doc said, he was dead. But the rule is, it doesn't matter. You can't say it. Luckily, it was in front of a doctor's house. He came out, grabbed the guy, and rolled him over like he was a water balloon. Every bone in his body must have been broken. And that, that probably sticks with me more than only those. <coughs> Memories that uh, we're all brought up. The worst ones, you kind of push aside and you got to live with it. And you survive. But the thing is that if you need help, membership here never says no, regardless of whether you're well liked or you're disliked. It will help. You will help. And that's probably the best thing with this. It's a brotherhood that we can't surpass. Who's that behind you there? Is that Norm? No, it's Todd Palmer. Oh, and then Jim McDonald. Tom Palmer. 
Is that your photo bombing? Is it pushing your dad's photo bombing? Yeah. He was the first photo bomber. <laughs> Yeah. Max always like, don't you see half his face in all yeah. these pictures? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I'm going to let Ira go last. I'll go. Um, favorite kid moment, uh, kind of two, uh, was Full Park picnic when my dad joined in 1983. The kids got to sit on the beaver tail and ride it over, ride the pumper over to the hydrant to fill up. That was like the coolest thing. Or we got to sit on the, uh, the uh, uh, jump seat. And then the second favorite moment, because I can say, because Jay's not here, uh, he was chief at the time, we, all the kids and families got to go up in the snorkel at Delwood Park and picnic the one year, and it was like the coolest thing going, because it was like seven years till I could join. So uh, um, that was the, the two favorite kid moments, that and running up to the bunk room to look at porn when you guys weren't called. <laughs> Most memorable call. I was sitting on Frank's lap. <laughs> Most memorable call uh, was probably uh, delivering a baby with Screech. Uh, Screech was, uh, I'm driving and I was driving my car and we met on, in, on Hartford. And uh, we, I delivered the baby and we were to cut the cord and you guys know Jim is very sk skittish and I wanted him to cut the cord and he's like this all over the place. I'm like, Jim, cut the cord! And, and so that, and obviously having a victim in a fire, pulling out somebody successfully was a really good experience, but it just happened. The, the, the most interesting part, which is one of the worst moments, was when we pulled out a non-live victim, but we didn't know at the time, out of a fire on Capon. And uh, we went in and Anna Bosch and Screech are in there, and just like when you're trained in the tower, I'm like, we got a victim! And I go, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> We've got no victim. <coughs> All of a sudden, they start passing her down. Yeah. They did. So those are kind of <clears throat> that. Um, those were some memorable calls. My first call ever was a hanging. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Um, I was a torch boy. Um, least favorite memory is probably trying to get into this shirt after all these years. <laughs> um, Evan, Brian, and Mike pound on the outside of my house to wake me up and tell me that Billy had passed away. It was a least favorite moment. Um, like Mike said, it was just a blur trying to do a lot of that in a short mm -hmm. period of time. And sucked and was cool all at the same time. Um, oh, least favorite memory, but also uh, most favorite memory. Making mistakes over the years. When making mistakes and knowing that you're making them at the time, you don't really comprehend it. But then looking back on it months, years later, you look at it as something that doesn't define you, but it improves you. Um, another most favorite moment as a firefighter was not going to the fire during Mike's wedding because that's where I met my wife, um, who yelled at me the first time I met her because I uh, went too fast up the aisle. So, <laughs> I said, I didn't know. And she said, you wouldn't know if you were at the rehearsal. She's a tough lady. So, uh, uh, Matt, and uh, just joining, wanting to join. I waited years and years to join since I was like seven when my dad joined. So I was like, next year, one year less, one year less. And uh, just wanted to join and do this, you know. And, and it's been a box that really my whole life has developed because of this place. From friendships to a career to my family uh, at home. Uh, everything, this is the trunk of the tree that kind of everything spurs off. Of. I always use uh, Eric Klump as, as kind of a humorous thing. He goes to me and he goes, yeah, I got to join the fire hall because I don't get to see you. I haven't seen it for 20 years other than when we're out together. Um, he goes, I had to join the fire hall because I'd never get to see you. Because a lot of your classmates and things, your people you grew up with, you don't get to see any, that much because life happens. But when you're a firefighter together and you're going to 1,200 calls plus a year together, and you're going all these nights and you got somebody that keeps you at a, a, a drill late till 10 o'clock at night, you spend time with people. You have a cocktail with people. You, you go on some pretty nasty shit with people. Um, one thing that Dave mentioned is, uh, Dave Stefan mentioned, is uh, that I tried to, to think of, and, and just to bring it full circle, not being the fire chief anymore, I want to just exp explain to my closest family members here that I, I truly believe that it brought me back to a very organic experience with this fire company and why I truly joined it. I really enjoy every second of it. But that 15 minutes, uh, now, now, that 15 minutes though, uh, that we're on a call for somebody with chest pains and goes to the hospital. I look back at it kind of now that 
that could be years of rehab for somebody. That could be a month worth of somebody being in the hospital. Um, I just can't believe how many calls we go on, what branches off of that, and how much tragedy really can happen. So luckily we're able to uh, not have a lot of the seriousness because people are taking better care of themselves, hopefully. They're not getting in high-speed car crashes because there's so much damn traffic in our fire district. Um, we have a lot of fire alarms, sprinkler systems, things like that. So there's a lot of adjuncts that were kind of put in that way. But uh, kind of in a nutshell, that's what it is. Just having fun. Uh, just finally, just to uh, know, uh, not least favorite, but just uh, input, is growing up here and maturing. Where are you? Hello? <laughs> it's either off or it's in the car. That's what his voice says. Or it's lost. Or it's lost. This is for high school. Mother, the 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 backwards or frontwards? <laughs> <laughs> always, always worrying, always worrying growing up here that this meeting, this drill was important. And it is. But knowing that in, in the grand scheme of things, the umbrella of everything here is very important, you know, and it, it compounds on itself. And you learn with everything you do. So that's, that's a huge part. So that's <coughs> enough of me. I, I read a close out and then I'll bring it up. Where do you want me to start? Uh, um, the end. Yeah, the end. Favorite moment. Favorite, favorite moment, if you can find one. Well, I got a couple, but I would think one that stands out in my mind is when my son joined the fire company <coughs> as a torch boy and later became a professional fire chief and put 25 years in the fire service at uh, Dover Air Force Base, Warner Robins Air Force Base, Niagara Falls Air Base, and Fort Drum. And he really had a wonderful career and I think back when he first when he first joined the fire company here, he said to me, he said, Dad, he said, someday I'm gonna be a chief. I said, you know how long it takes to become a chief? He said, don't worry about it. He said, I'll make it. And he sure did. One of the, what do you want, what do you want next? Uh, favorite call, or most memorable call. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> one? One of the recent ones was I mean, and then Gary Shout. Gary Lindner left. He's the one that shit in the house fire. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that, that we was, could have made fecal matter of some category. That was with Bach <laughs> going into that garage <laughs> fire. Uh, I don't know if there's been so many of them. I haven't missed too many of the big ones. Least favorite? The darkest day in the history of the Agatha Hose Company, and one that I will never forget as long as I live. It was the day Billy Donaldson died. And Billy Donaldson and myself go back many years. I was here the night he came back from the service, and he had a beard like this. And Red Blackburn picked him right up by the beard. I'll never forget that. But Billy, Billy was 10 years older than I was. Helen was 10 years older than my wife. They were married 10 years longer than we were. And I was with him the night his youngest son got killed out in Colorado. And I had to go over and tell him that Bobby got killed in the sewer. And when, when Billy died, part of me died with him. And I will never, never, ever forget that. And I think the majority of you fellows that were here then will always remember that too, because he was just the greatest. How long did he say he was going for? When did he start doing that? Well, he started... Depends, he, you're going to come to the meeting, Bill? It depends if I'm alive. Yeah, that was like was 40 years that. ago. Well, he had... He had, he, he, he had a dozen pieces of 1 by 12 clear white pine in his basement that he always told me that was going to make the box. And for the last 10 years that he was alive, he'd say, Bill, what are you doing? I'm making the pegs for the box. 
When was his stroke? Uh, like a year before he passed, or was that two years? Remember? No, it was. It was sure. that day. No, 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 no. no. The one where they took him out on the stretcher. Yeah, and we took him to the hospital. Oh yeah. He's yeah. saying, so, "This is how it is." Yeah, he's sitting on the. Not, he's yeah. sitting on the tub. Oh, yeah. This is about two years before he died. This is it. This is the last ride. And <laughs> <laughs> we're so used to hearing it from. This is it. So you quack and all that. Quack and have one that thing for. I was an old timer, a new guy coming in. Every fire, no matter how smoky it was, I would walk out of the building with a cigarette hanging out. Winston. 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 No matter how smoky it was, you didn't know Winston. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. I would come out and there's that cigarette hanging out. What is he doing? Not too smoky. <laughs> I'll never forget, we had a fire, I think it was on Windermere, and it was a, a bedroom fire. And Steve Manis is laying on the stairwell with the line. And I come clomping up. How was I dressed? Coat open, boots down, yep. hands on fire. Cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> I said, Steve, the fire's in there. Come on. Grabbed him by the coat collar. Up we went. You did that to me. We're in a bedroom, a house is rolling all over the place. I got the van. I <sighs> can't see a thing. It's a. Hey, it's over there. What the heck are you doing in here, and where's your mask? Do as I say, not as um, I do. Anybody else have anything to add? I know it's really late for a drill chief. Will we get two drill credits for this? No, but he's not smiling. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, my credit. Thank you guys for a late night. I thought it would be an early night, but we started wrapping at the end here. I really appreciate you guys and your honesty and your candidness. I'm not going to post any of this, so don't feel like we are. Um, keep it coming. Thanks, John. Thanks for the drill. John, can we have a meeting next week? Does that work for you? Yeah. That work for Jim? He said he's okay. Jimmy Lee? Okay. Jimmy Lee? Okay. We're going to do it next week now? Hold on. Thanks, John. Did Jimmy? Next Thursday. He's not going to be there. Jimmy's going to be there.